So it's time to talk about fluid writing, how to guide your reader from paragraph to paragraph, from sentence to sentence. And one trick that helps and that you probably already know is to use transitional phrases like furthermore, as a result of, in conclusion. Uh, and these phrases do help. They signal a connection for the reader between each sentence. But, but, but here's the thing, they can't do it alone. Okay, the real secret to flow is about guiding readers from what they already know to where you want to go. Okay, from taking them from familiar to the unfamiliar. That's why fluid writing always feels like you're being guided by the, by the writer. Hence our editing question, do you guide readers from familiar to anything unfamiliar? Now, that might sound obvious. But it's amazing how often we do the exact reverse. We start paragraphs, sentences with new concepts, names the reader doesn't know. And starting out this way with new information puts incredible cognitive load on our reader. It's confusing. It's a recipe for confusion. Here's an example. Say you're going along reading an a, a article about uh, allergies and you run into a paragraph that begins this way. An immunological overreaction in susceptible people is provoked when certain immune system cells just meet the lining of the nose or bumped into by pollen. Now, as a reader, you're likely annoyed by that sentence because it's confusing. But now you're an editor, so it's your job to revise the sentence so it flows. Let's say for a college student like you. What would you do? You could scrap that long opening phrase, but then you'd still have the unfamiliar immune system cells at the start of the sentence. You could break the sentence in two, but then you're still stuck with those immunological overreactions. What about making the passive verbs active? That's a, that's a great idea, but, but you won't change the start of the sentence, and that's the key. The answer is in our editing question. It's all about guiding readers from familiar to anything unfamiliar. So we need to find something here that we can put at the start, something familiar, do you spot anything? There it is, hiding at the end of the sentence, pollen. And that's where the sentence should begin, with pollen. Start with pollen, and then guide your reader to that long, abstract phrase at the end. You don't even need to change any of the words. Just a few verb forms here and there and there and voila, a fluid sentence. When pollen bumps into certain immune system cells just beneath the line of the uh, nose or eyes, it provokes an immunological overreaction in susceptible people. Fluid writing, and that wasn't so hard. Now, I have a confession. The sentence you just read uh, was written by an award-winning writer named Stephen Hall. I'm the one who wrote that confusing sentence uh, that we had to edit, and I did it because I wanted to make a point that good fluid writing is always about sequence, about guiding readers from what's familiar to them to anything unfamiliar. Good writers know this. So let's look at the rest of the passage from Hall. You might want to pause the video for a second just so that you can read the, the full passage. Now, look at how Hall takes us from pollen and then to immune cells. And then once we, we know these mast cells, he guides us to inflammatory molecules and then from inflammatory molecules to the most technical term of all, histamine, which comes not only at the end of the sentence, but at the end of the paragraph. It's as if Stephen Hall has danced us to histamine, taking us from old to new, from familiar to anything unfamiliar, familiar to unfamiliar, and then takes us all the way to histamine. And you can probably guess how the next paragraph begins with histamine. Okay, now it's your turn. Open up the case study file the one named Flow, and there you're going to find a passage about how cells create energy. Your job is to make it flow for a college student like you. Now, you don't have to be a science major to do this. In fact, it's probably easier if you're not because then you'll be able to spot what's unfamiliar. You just go through the passage and ask, does this guide readers from familiar to anything unfamiliar? Whenever the answer is no, then you look for something familiar and you use it to guide readers to anything unfamiliar. So it's time to pause the video now and get to work. And when you're done, resume the video. All right, welcome back. Now I'll tell you a little bit more about that passage you just edited. It's another case where I took a beautiful piece of fluid writing and I mucked it up. 
This time it's a passage by Pulitzer Prize winning writer Jonathan Wiener. Before I show you Wiener's version, uh, I, I want to emphasize that your version doesn't need to look like his. There are countless ways you could have edited uh, that version to make it flow. As long as you guide a typical college student from anything unfamiliar, anything familiar, to anything unfamiliar. Now, if you're ready, let's take a look. Again, you might want to pause the video uh, to read the full passage. Look at how Jonathan Wiener starts with something every college student would know a simple cell. And then he uses it to guide us to mitochondria, and then from mitochondria to these rotary motors, and third sentence begins with you breathing, and the next takes us from the rotary motors all the way to the most complex concept, adenosine triphosphate. And then we begin with ATP in the next paragraph. It's a beautiful piece of fluid writing about a very complex, tough subject. And you can do this. You can create the same fluidity, whatever your subject is, as long as you guide your reader from what's familiar to anything unfamiliar. That's the secret to flow. So are you ready to go on to the next segment? If not, just replay this video. Once you're ready, let's move on to clarity. See you in a bit.